Hi, my name is Kara, and today I'm going to do a walkthrough of my The Spin sweater. So right now I am wearing the chunky version, which is written for super bulky weight yarn. And I also have a light version, which is written for a bulky weight yarn here. And I also will have a pattern for an ultralight version coming out, which is meant for a worsted whip yarn. And this pattern will be coming out March 10th. Today I will be showing you how I made the chunky version right now, but the instructions will be very similar to how you would do the light version and the ultralight version as well. So you can follow along with so you can follow along with any of the three patterns, but I will just be showing you with the super chunky yarn, just because it's faster and that's what I filmed. <laughs> and if you use code YouTube, you can get 15% off all of the patterns, all of all three versions of the spin sweater and thank you so much for supporting me and my patterns and let me know if you have any other questions and let's get into it so first things first we're going to chunk materials for the chunky version you're going to need super bulky weight yarn 12 millimeter needles and 15 millimeter needles and all of the needles that i'm going to talk about today do need to be circular because you will be knitting in the round so this sweater is knit partially flat and partially in the round and it's mostly knit in the round and you can always knit flat with circular needles but you can't knit in the round with straight needles so please get circular needles for the light version, you're going to need bulky weight yarn, 8mm and 6mm needles. And for the ultra light version, you're going to need worsted weight yarn and 4mm and 5mm needles. So how much yarn you'll need will depend on what size you're making, and you can read that in the material section. And so all the sizes are separated by parentheses, so the first number is for extra small, the first number in parentheses is for the small, then medium, large, XL, 2X, 3X, 4X, and 5X. And so I recommend just going through the pattern and highlighting the numbers for your size in particular, just because that way you don't have to keep on counting every single time to like the fourth number if you're making it large. You can just like go to the highlighted number. You also need four stitch markers and you can also use like scrap pieces of yarn, rings, whatever's on hand, just as long as you can tell that that is a stitch marker and that that denotes between two stitches, you're good to go. So for this tutorial, I will be working on the chunky version of this sweater. And so if you're working on the other weights of the sweater, just pretend that like when I say like 12 millimeter needles, I mean six millimeter or four millimeter needles. Just whatever needle is smaller for you. So you're going to take the smaller version of your needles and you're going to long tail cast on however many stitches you need. And keep in mind that this first part, the top is going to be knit flat. So you're going to be working back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so we are going to create our slip knot for our long tail cast on. And so we're just going to create the slip knot here for a more detailed tutorial on how to do long tail cast on. I have one of those. So we're going to take our slip knot and place them on our smaller set of needles. And we're just going to long tail cast on. So we have our long tail, and then we have the rest of the yarn that's attached. So we're going to take our thumb, and we're going to create a loop. And we're going to slip that loop onto the needle. Then we're going to wrap the tail, and then pull that loop over the tail. And then you're going to do that again and again. And again, for a more detailed version of long tail cast on, I have another YouTube tutorial on that. Once we've casted on our stitches, we are going to do a knit one, purl one. And so first things first, in order to create a nice and neat edge, we are actually going to slip the first stitch purl-wise, and then we're going to work the rest of the stitches in one by one ribbing. So just slip one purl-wise, then knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, until you have one stitch left, and then you just knit one. And you repeat that step until you have a collar that's the right length. And you can always make the collar shorter, you can always make the collar longer, whatever you want. Okay, so you're going to insert your needle as if to purl, but you're just going to slip that onto the right needle and then move your yarn to the back. And now you're just going to knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And this is one by one ribbing. So knit and then purl. Once we've finished the collar, we're going to switch to our bigger set of needles. So in this case, the 15 millimeter needles, and we're going to start working on the body. And so first we're going to place our stitch markers. So we're going to work the indicated number of stitches place a stitch marker that will be our front left or our front right, I can't remember which one's which. And then we're going to work some more stitches, that'll be for our sleeve, place a stitch marker, then we'll work on the back, place a stitch marker, the other sleeve, stitch marker, and then the other front panel. And so now you've placed all your stitch markers. Okay, so I finished the collar here, and I have my 15 millimeter needles and a bunch of stitch markers. And now I am just going to start placing the stitch marker. So you're going to slip the first stitch purlwise because we're on a purl row, and then we're just going to work the stitches for the front left or right panel. And once we've worked enough stitches, we are just going to place our stitch marker, and that will denote the front panel from the sleeve. And we'll just continue to do this until we've placed all of our stitch markers. Now we are just going to work on the body and we're going to slowly increase stitches so that this is a top-down sweater. I love top-down sweaters. They're seamless. They're so fun. They keep me engaged. I think that they use less yarn and they fit a lot better than like 
bottom-up sweaters and so I'll obviously make those whenever I feel like it but I love a top-down sweater so 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 much and so what we're going to do is we're going to do a make one right and a make one left so these are right leaning and left leaning increases so first things first I'm going to show you how to do a make one left now for our make one left we are going to pick up the bar in between stitches for going from the front to the back so this is a little tricky and then we're going to knit this stitch through the back loop and this will make sure that there's no awkward gaps and that's a make one left now we're going to make a right leaning increase so we're going to make a make one right okay so we've reached the point where we're going to do our make one right we're going to pick up the bar between the stitches and we're just going to go from the back to the front and then we'll just knit this stitch normally and that's a make one right and keep in mind, while you're working the piece flat, you're going to continue to slip the very first stitch, either knit-wise or purl-wise, and this will just make sure that you have a nice, neat edge. Once you've increased the right number of stitches, you are going to divide these stitches for the sleeves from the stitches from the body. And so what you're going to do is you are going to work the stitches for the front panel normally, and when you come onto the sleeve, you're going to take a needle and a scrap piece of yarn, and you're going to place those stitches on hold, and you're just going to like tie them off and like work on them later and then you're going to join the front panel to the back panel and you're just going to continue to knit and then you're just going to knit the back and then divide these stitches for the other sleeve and then continue to knit the front and now you've divided these stitches from the body from the stitches for the sleeve okay so here i am finishing up working on these stitches for the front panel now i've reached my stitch marker i'm going to take it off put it to the side now i'm going to take my scrap piece of yarn in my needle and i'm just going to thread it through these stitches for the sleeves and I'm going to put them on hold. And you can always use your finger and just kind of thread the scrap piece of yarn through but I find it's a lot more easier with the needle. And you're just going to place all those stitches for the sleeves on hold. And once you've finished that up you're just going to tie the scrap yarn together and yeah just a simple knot will do here. <laughs> and then once you've done that, you're just going to continue to knit the body in the round and make sure that you keep the stitch marker there just to denote the front panel from the back panel. And then you're just going to continue to knit the stitches for the back. Now here's the tricky part. We are now going to join in the round and we're going to join our front panels together to create that cute little v-neck at the front. Okay, so you're going to take your smaller set of needles or just any scrap needles, honestly, but I mean, you should have the smaller set anyways. And you're going to take the first few stitches of the front left panel and you're just going to place them on the smaller set of needles. Then you're going to take the last stitches of the front right panel and you're going to slip them onto your left needle. And once you've done that, you are ready to take those stitches that were on hold on the smaller set of needles and you're going to place them back onto the left needles. And keep in mind that the working yarn is actually attached to those stitches that are on the smaller set of needles and make sure you don't drop anything it's a little tricky but if you do it carefully you won't drop any stitches or it'll be okay and now you've joined in the round and you're going to continue to knit in the round and as you can see the yarn should be attached to those first few stitches you're just going to knit to the stitch marker that's underneath the armpit and from now on you're going to be working the body and you're going to be doing increases and here's where you could add length if you want to i love a nice crop sweater you could obviously change that. Just continue to knit in the round and rent and stock a net until you reach the desired length. Keep in mind that adding the ribbing will add about two to three inches. Once your body is as long as you want it to be, you can switch to your smaller set of needles, in this case your 12 millimeter needles, and knit in one by one ribbing. And once you finish the one by one ribbing, just cast off loosely in pattern. So now you've finished the body of the sweater and we're going to work on the sleeves next. So now you're going to take your 15 millimeter needles or your bigger set of needles, and you're going to pick up the stitches that you left on holds. And so you're just going to pick them up from the scrap piece of yarn, you can cut the scrap piece of yarn, whatever. And once you have those on your needles, you're going to pick up some stitches for the undersleeve. And this is just so that you can close up any gap that might happen under the sleeve. All right, so take your 15 millimeter needles and just literally place those stitches back onto the needles. So you might have to like pull the scrap yarn a bit just to create the loop a little bit easier. And you're just going to insert your needle and just place that loop back onto the needle. Once you've picked them up, just cut the scrap yarn and pull it out. And now we're going to pick up the stitches for the undersleeve. So you're going to take your yarn and you're gonna take the tail and you're just going to take the needle and you're going to find a loop or a hole underneath the sleeve. And I would do about a few rows down, insert your needle. It might be a little tricky, 
and just loop your yarn over and then just pull that loop through to the other side and this is how you pick up stitches for the undersleeve and just continue to do this and try to pick up stitches from about the same row so that it's not too wonky and then place a stitch marker and that'll mark the beginning of your round and from now on, you're going to be knitting the sleeve in the round. So this is super easy. I love working on sleeves. Sometimes it's a little too easy though. And you're just going to be adding length to your sleeves. And I really recommend trying on your sleeve as you go, just so that you can figure out how long you want it to be. And once your sleeve is as long as you want it to be, you're going to be doing a decrease row. So here you're just going to knit two together, knit two together, and you're going to decrease how many stitches you have by half. And then switch to your smaller set of needles, in this case your 12 millimeter needles, and begin to knit in one by one ribbing. Once you finish the cuff, you're just going to bind off loosely in pattern. And if you're working on one of the lighter weight versions, I actually recommend doing a tubular bind off because bulky weight yarn is very forgiving when it comes to like a regular one by one ribbing cast off, but sometimes it's not stretchy enough for like lighter weight yarn. So if you're working on the light version or the ultra light version, I do recommend doing a tubular bind off. So we're just going to insert our needle into two stitches and knit them together. And this is how you do the decreases for the cuff. And we'll just do this for the entire round. And now we're just going to switch to our smaller set of needles and work one by one ribbing. So place the stitch marker to the side and just take your smaller set of needles and do a knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one to the end of the row. And once you've done your first round, don't forget to put the stitch marker back on. To cast off in pattern, we're going to work two stitches as normal and then pull one stitch over the other and then work another stitch and pull that last stitch over the other. And this is how you cast off in pattern. And so one last trick I like to do when I am weaving in all my ends, this is how I like to close the gap when knitting in the round and you have, you might notice like a small gap between like the first and the last stitch. And so this is how I like to clean that up. And so to clean up any gaps in the one by one ribbing cast off, I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and the tail I'm going to insert the needle into the top V of the first stitch and then pull it through and then I'm going to insert the needle through the top V of the last stitch and pull it through and make sure you don't pull too tight and this should close up any gap that you have in the one by one ribbing cast off and then just weave in all your ends and that is everything that you need to knit the spin sweater let me know if you have any other questions thank you so much for supporting me and my patterns Happy knitting and have a great day. See ya. Thank you.